In this episode of our World of Warcraft Mount Farm World Tour, we're going to be taking a look at the mounts you can get in Eastern Kingdoms, the ones that make sense at least for this series. In the last episode we took a look at the mounts you can get in Kalimdor and there should be a pop up now if you missed that episode. Our first stop is going to be the Isle of Queldenas which we'll find way off north of Eastern Kingdoms and to get there you either want to take the flight path or alternatively if you head over to Shatraf City which is found in Outland you'll find a portal that will take you directly to the Isle of Queldenas, probably the fastest way of getting there depending on where you are currently. Once you're on the island you'll find a dungeon called Magister's Terrace and if you run Magister's Terrace on heroic difficulty then the mount that we can get from this dungeon is the Swift White Hawk Strider. That's going to be on about a 3-4% chance of dropping and it's going to drop from the last boss of the dungeon, Quelfast Sunstrider. As this is a dungeon you're going to be able to run it once per day on heroic so you can have one chance of doing it per character every single day. The next destination is going to be the Ghostlands and off to the east of the Ghostlands you'll find the dungeon Zulaman. From this dungeon we can get the mount the Armani Battle Bear. So what you'll want to do is head inside Zulaman on heroic difficulty. You'll head in and you'll speak to Vol'jin who will basically start the event to start the dungeon. You'll have to click on the gong. Once the gong has been clicked and the gates open you'll see a timer at the top of your screen. So to get this mount what we have to do is complete the first four bosses within that time frame. For a 120 character there should be no problem whatsoever. Just kill the first four bosses in the order that I killed them in. The order isn't particularly important. It just makes sure you don't make any mistakes or fail along the way. So you'll kill the first four bosses and then on the fourth boss kill it's not actually the loot from the boss that we care about. Instead you're going to speak to the prisoner in the cage and they'll run around and break all of the pots. And then on the final pot that they break there will be a bag. Inside the bag should be the Armani Battle Bear. Now this is meant to be a 100% drop chance. Some people do claim that they've not got the mount from their first run. I'm just going to say it's either bugged and I would check the other prisoners, the other three prisoners that you saved and check their loot because it may have bugged out and ended up with them or they've just done it wrong in some way shape or form but some people do claim this weird like 99% drop chance so if you don't get it on your first run and you're sure you've checked all the other prisoners then just come back the next day because it's pretty unlikely that you do it two days in a row and don't get it if this 99% drop chance is actually true. Just next door to the Ghostlands will be our next destination and that's going to be the Eastern Plaguelands. Within Eastern Plaguelands you'll find the Dungeon Stratholme and there's actually two entrances for Stratholme. We have the Living Side which is kind of like the main entrance and then you have the Undead Side which is the Service Side Entrance. So we'll want to go to the Side Entrance which you'll find just kind of east of the main entrance. Here you'll find a little gate, you'll click on the gate and you'll be able to head inside. From this dungeon we'll be able to get the Mount Rivendare's Death Charger which is going to be a 1% drop chance from the last boss Aureus Rivendare. So to get to the last boss you'll have to clear through the dungeon but this one can be a little bit tricky if it's your first time running it. First of all you'll have to destroy the three ziggurats and to do that you'll kill the boss outside of them and then all the bosses inside. Once all three of them de are destroyed the butcher quarter I think it's called will open up. You'll head over there and you'll kill off all of the A-bombs in this area. Once you've killed them all then a larger boss A-bomb will spawn you'll kill that. Then a side gate will open and a wave of undead will spawn and you'll have to kill all those little undead. Then when you're finally done with that four kind of bodyguards will come out, you'll kill the bodyguards and you'll finally have access to the last boss where you can get yourself a chance at the mount. As this is done on a normal dungeon you can run out after killing the last boss, reset it, run back in and have another chance of getting the mount. And you can keep doing this over and over again, the only thing that will slow you down slash limit you is the 10 lockouts per hour but outside of that you can keep doing it as much or as little as you want and keep having repeated chances at the mount in one day. Our next stop is going to be Arafi Highlands for the new rares that were introduced with the Warfront changes. There's going to be 5 rares here for Horde and Alliance and these are all going to drop a mount that will be on about a 5-6% to drop chance. You can only kill these rares once per cycle though, not once per week or once per day, once per cycle. A cycle is when the Warfront goes from the patrolling state all the way through the other various states like the Siege etc back into patrolling. Once it gets to patrolling again you'll be able to have another shot at the mounts. The first mount up is going to be the Little Donkey and this is going to drop from Overseer Crix. Now this rare will move depending on who is in control of Arafi Highlands at the time. If Horde is in control then the rare will appear in the Alliance Mines and if Alliance is in control then the rare will appear in the Horde Mines. So do keep that in mind when you're looking for the rare. The next mount up is going to change depending on if you're Horde or Alliance. 
For Horde, you're going to get the Broken Highland Mustang, and that is going to drop from Knight Captain Aldrin. And for Alliance, you're going to get the Highland Mustang, which comes from Doom Rider Helgrim. The next mount up is Skull Ripper, and this is going to be the same for Horde and Alliance, and its spot won't change, and it drops from the rare Skull Ripper. It will run around the rock a little bit, but it's pretty much always in the same spot. The next mount is the Witherbark Direwing, and this is going to drop from Nimar the Slayer, which is going to be the same for Horde and Alliance also. And then the final mount is the Swift Albino Raptor, once again same for Horde and Alliance, and this is going to come from a rare very close to Nimar called Beast Rider Kama. So you'll find that it'll be walking up and down a little bit, but you should find it pretty easily kill that, and then that is the last of the rares that we can get from Aravi Highland. The next spot on our Eastern Kingdoms tour is going to be Stormwind, so that's obviously going to be for Alliance only, and the two points of interest here are going to be Deep Holm and the Dark Moon Fair if that's up. The reason this is Eastern Kingdoms only is because we covered these on the Kalimdor one for Horde, which is their access points for these two places. So our first stop is going to be Deepholm, and to get there you'll head over to the northeastish side of the zone and you'll find a portal circle, there'll be a bunch of portals in like a, a circle in the water, and you'll click on the one that will take you to Deepholm. And within Deepholm you'll find the Dungeon Stone Core. From the second boss within Stone Core, you can do this on Normal or Heroic, you'll find the Mount, the Vitreous Stone Drake. That's on about a 1% drop chance, and you can repeat this over and over again if you want to on Normal, until you get locked out of course. But well, you could do it once a day on Heroic, the drop chances are exactly the same. Also within the zone of Deep Holm, you'll find the rare spawn Aeonax, although Aeonax is actually a rare spawn of a rare spawn, so you could be waiting a day to find it, you could be waiting three days, you could be waiting a week, it's a, a quite RNG heavy respawn timer. But when Aeonax does spawn, you'll kill it and you'll get yourself the Phosphorescent Stone Drake, which will be on a 100% drop chance. The hard part is just finding Aeonax. So now that we're done in Deep Home, we're going to head through the portal back to Stormwind and we're going to head to Goldshire in Elwyn Forest, but only if the Dark Moon Fair is active. The Dark Moon Fair comes around once per month at the start of the month for about a week. So if that is up and active, you'll head over to Elwyn and you'll find a portal that will take you to the Dark Moon Fair. Once there, there'll be three different mounts we can get from the Dark Moon prize tickets. And you get Dark Moon prize tickets from handing in the quest items, which you get from the Adventurer's Guide. This can be done once per cycle, so every month basically. You can be farming these from various sources using the Adventurer's Guide, having it in your inventory, but I generally buy them from the auction house, they don't cost that much. You can also be doing the daily quests at the Dark Moon Fair Island, which will also give you Dark Moon prize tickets. And with the tickets, we'll be able to buy three mounts. The first being the Swift Forest Strider, this is going to cost 180 tickets. The second being the Dark Moon Dancing Bear, that's also going to cost 180 tickets. And then finally we have the Dark Moon Dirigible, which is going to cost 1000 tickets. So that's going to be the one that you're going to be working towards the most. Also while you're here, you could do a spot of fishing, and you'll be able to get the Dark Moon Dagamores, which can either be used to turn in for another mount, which is the Dark Moon Fair Skate, or you alternatively you can buy the Dagamores from the auction house. There's also a quest item that you can buy once per character, it will give you a decent chunk of tickets too, so if you haven't done that, I definitely would recommend doing it. I think it gives like 200 tickets, so it's definitely doing the first time round if you haven't done it. The next two destinations are going to be for Horde and Alliance again, but you'll want to stick around your major city, so if you're Alliance you'll want to still be in Stormwind, and if you're Horde you'll want to head over to Orgrimmar. That's because, yeah sure, Orgrimmar is outside of Eastern Kingdoms, but we'll be using Orgrimmar to get to the next location that is in Eastern Kingdoms. So near the portal circle where we're at for Deep Holm, etc, there'll be another portal just off to the left hand side that will take you to Tol Barad. You'll click on that and we'll head over to Tol Barad, and there's going to be two mounts that we can get here for Horde and Alliance. The first mount is going to be the Spectral Wolf which will be for Horde, and that is going to cost 160 commendations and will require you to be exalted with your faction at Tol Barad. The next mount is for Alliance and that is going to be the Spectral Steed, it's going to cost these same commendations and you will also need to be exalted. The final mount is going to be shared between Horde and Alliance and that is going to be the Drake of the West Wind and that one is going to cost 200 commendations and once again you will need to be exalted. You can get exalted by doing the various dailies found at Tol Barad. You'll want to do the dailies at the Tol Barad Peninsula and then there'll also be the separate PvP zone in Tol Barad as well that if your faction is controlling it at the time there'll be a bunch more dailies for you to do. 
So you want to be trying to get all of those dailies out of the way and honestly by the time you have enough commendations to buy a mount you should be exalted anyway so getting to exalted isn't the hard part, the hard part will be continuously doing the grind to get all of the commendations. Once we're done at Tolbarad we're going to head back through the portal back to Stormwind or Orgrimmar, this will be the final time now. And then from there we want to go to Vashir. If you haven't unlocked Vashir yet, you should find a quest line that you can follow. It should be found on the Call to Arms board. You might have to accept some of the newer quests, but eventually you should find a quest that will take you to Vashir. You'll follow that chain, you'll be sent out to Vashir. And then once we're in Vashir, there's going to be two different mounts we can get. The first mount up is going to be the Vashir Seahorse, and this will add to your total mount collection, but unfortunately this mount can only be used in Vashir. Although it is pretty simple to get, you'll basically just continue the quest line that you were following to get to Vashir. That should continue and eventually you'll get to a quest to tame a turtle. You'll tame the turtle, it'll die unfortunately. And then you'll go on another quest to tame something a little bit faster which will be the seahorse. Once you're done with that quest then you'll have the mount and you'll be done. It's pretty straightforward, it takes like 10 maybe 20 minutes so not very long at all. The next mount we can get from this zone is going to be Reigns of Poseidus, and this is a BOE mount, so you can also pick it up on the auction house. It doesn't go for that much nowadays, and that is because Poseidus was a rare spawn with a pretty hefty respawn timer. But in Legion, the respawn timer was changed and nerfed quite a bit, and now it's on about a 3 to 8 hour respawn. So you'll find this in Vashir, it does have 5 different spawn locations, which I'll be showing now, and you basically just want to be checking those 5 spawn locations. Seeing if Poseidus is up, and if it is up, you can kill it and you will get yourself the mount, which I said is BOE. So you could either use it or sell it if you want, but it doesn't go for a whole lot nowadays. So once we're done in Vashir, we're actually going to swim up out of the water and then get yourself on a flying mount. And you're going to fly back to the mainland of Eastern Kingdoms. Just be a little bit careful with the direction that you take so you don't die to fatigue. You can easily make this flight, but if you kind of take a, a diagonal path, then you're probably going to die to fatigue. So just be a little bit careful on how you fly there. But our next destination is going to be Stranglethorn Vale, and there we're going to find the dungeon Zul'Gurub. Once you're at Zul'Gurub, you'll head inside, as this is a heroic-only dungeon very similar to Zul'Aman, so your difficulty will automatically be set to heroic. And there's going to be two potential mounts we can get from this place. The first one is going to be the Armored Razashi Raptor, and the second mount is going to be the Swift Zul'Ian Panther. Both of these mounts are on about a 1% drop chance, and you're only going to have one shot at these every day because it is a heroic dungeon, so you can come back every day and have an additional chance. So for the Armored Razashi Raptor, you'll want to kill Blood Lord Mandukir, which you'll find kind of off to the northeast side of the dungeon. So head over to him, kill him. There's rumors that he needs to be off his mount or whatever, but that's pretty much crap. Just kill the boss and you'll have about a 1% chance of getting the mount. Next one is the High Priestess Kilnara, and you'll find her more off to the west side of the dungeon. Head over to the west, it'll be inside like the temple, and there, kill the boss once again, nothing special you need to do, and you'll have about a 1% chance of getting that mount. The final zone on our Eastern Kingdoms tour is going to be Deadwind Pass and you'll find this zone right next to Stranglethorn Vale. So fly over there and there's going to be three mounts that we can potentially get from this. The first mount up is going to be the Fiery War Horse which we're going to get from the raid version of Karazhan. So to get into the raid version you'll want to head through the main entrance of Karazhan which you can see right now. I'm going to head inside here and we don't have to go very far we just have to kill the first boss who is Attunement. Now all of the trash will pull when you pull the boss, but that doesn't really matter. Just basically run your way to the boss, kill the boss down, and you'll have about a 1% chance of looting the Fiery Warhorse. Now as this version is a read, we're only going to be able to do it once per reset per character. So if you want additional chances, you will have to do it on alts, and then do as many alts as you can that week. Now that we're done with the raid version of Karazhan, next up we want to do the Mythic Dungeon version. To get to that, you'll want to fly up to the right side of Karazhan, and you'll find the side entrance that you can head inside. Do make sure you're on Mythic though, as this stuff won't be working on Heroic. So there's going to be two mounts that we can get from this place, the first being the Smoldering Ember Worm, and the second being Midnight. I'm going to run through how to get the Smoldering Ember Worm first, because that's basically a timed run of Karazhan. So once you're inside and you click on the wooden doors, the timer will begin, and you'll basically just have to run through the dungeon with moderate speed, but as a 120 this shouldn't be too much of a struggle depending on your item level. So you're going to kill down the opera fight and then in the audience section, after you've killed opera, you want to head over there and there'll be a purple crystal that you can click on. Now a couple of things to note, you want to make sure one person, if you're doing this with multiple people, 
You want to make sure only one person is clicking the crystals. And while you're channeling the cast, you want to ensure you're not moving. You want to stand perfectly still, as I have heard that moving will interrupt the cast and the crystal can despawn. So once one person has the first crystal, then you want to make your way over to Maiden. But before you get into Maiden's room, there'll be a side room to the left. You want to head inside there and there we'll find another crystal next to the bed. The person who clicked the first crystal should be the same person to click this next one and the same rules will apply. So now we've got our second crystal, next we're going to head over to Morose, which we can jump down and head into the kind of dining area to get to him. You're going to kill Morose and then just behind Morose will be our third crystal. Same rules once again, make sure the same person is clicking it and make sure you pick up Morose's keys as well because they'll be useful. Now that we have the third crystal, we're going to head over to Attunman, but we're not going to head into Attunman's room. Instead, we're going to take a left and then another left and we'll be in this kind of spider area. And you want to follow the spider area down and then to the right and there we'll find our fourth crystal. It'll be kind of surrounded by webs. So get our fourth crystal and then with four, we'll click on the portal just behind the fourth crystal and then we're going to head up to Curator. So once we're at Curator, you're basically just going to kill Curator and in between his legs after he's dead should be the fifth crystal. It can be a little bit tough to click, so it might be worth looting any loot that's there just to make the click a little bit easier. And then once we have all five crystals, you'll get a new buff, which will be Medivh's presence. And that'll only have a five minute duration, but that's plenty of time. And you're going to take that buff, you're going to run back down, and you're going to head onto the terrace. And then on the terrace, you'll find uh, Medivh's kind of ghost. You'll speak to him and then after a little bit of RP then Nightbane will spawn and this will be a boss that you have to kill and then once you kill the boss you'll have a 20% chance per person of the mount dropping. So if you're doing this solo you're going to have a 20% chance of getting the mount. If you have three people in the group regardless of if they have the mount or not you'd have a 60% chance and if you have five people a full group you would have a 100% chance of the mount dropping even if four people already have it the fifth person would guaranteed get that mount. So now that we're done with the Smoldering Ember Worm, the final mount left to get is Midnight. And to get that, we're going to head left back over to the terrace and you should find a staircase that will take you down. You want to follow this down and this will actually take you into a Toonman's room. It's kind of an alternative entrance. So you'll head all the way down there and you basically just want to kill a Toonman. And if you've done this on Mythic, then you'll have a 1% chance of getting the Midnight's Eternal Reigns, which will give you the Midnight Mount. So that does bring an end to our Eastern Kingdoms mount tour and if you enjoyed this video then look out for more of these because everyone seemed to really like the Kalimdor one so we're going to continue with Outland next. And if you did enjoy this video or my videos in general then consider supporting the channel on Patreon even $1 support helps quite a lot. You'll find a link to that down below in the description. Outside of that look out for more videos coming soon. Thanks for watching guys. See ya.